Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Amy Reads. And today we're doing something a little bit different. We're going to do my very first recent reads video. So if you watch my channel, you know that uh, pretty much for this year, if not a little longer, I've been doing my monthly wrap ups a bit differently where I don't talk about every single book because then they're like 30 minutes long and nobody wants that and I don't like talking about them for that long. So I usually just kind of hit the high notes, talk about books I didn't like um, and talk about my stats. But I'm going to try something different where I just do recent reads. Um, I've waited a little too long to do this. I wanted to do it earlier in the month, but that's okay. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the books. You know, once I get to like eight books, seven or eight books maybe, I'm just going to talk about those. If I have a slower month, then that's fine. I'll just talk about four or five books or whatever. Um, so I decided that I'm going to try that. We'll see if we like it and go from there. So I have done a couple of vlogs this month um, and so I do have a couple of books to talk about that I'm not going to talk very long about because I've already gone in depth about them in two vlogs. So the most recent vlog that I did um, I will link down below but I read books with oranges on the cover and I read Commonwealth by Ann Patchett and Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. Um, so I'm not even gonna tell you my ratings because you should go watch the vlog if you haven't already. Spoiler alert, I enjoyed both of them. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what they are though. Small Pleasures is historical fiction set in London in or you know outside of London in the 50s about a journalist who is tasked with this story of this woman who claims that her daughter was born via virgin birth, basically immaculate conception. And so she is um, doing this story for the newspaper she works at and gets really like entrenched in this other woman's life um, and goes from there. Very good. Um, the other one was Commonwealth by Ann Patchett. This is partially historical fiction. It's one of these books where um, you're getting little vignettes from lots of different time periods. But it starts out I believe in the 60s and it kind of starts with this catalyst. Um, basically these two people kiss. They're both married to other people and that one incident that happens at the beginning of the book um, ends up tearing those two families apart and then those two people get remarried and the six children that they have collectively from those first marriages um, are kind of the protagonists of this book really and one in particular and we are following them uh, and it's it's just a very um, quiet family story. I talk more in depth about it obviously in my vlog um, but I did enjoy both of those books. Um, the other books that I talked about in a vlog, I did a try a chapter thing and then ended up just reading a couple of books in the vlog. The first one I read was They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. Sorry for the shininess. This is a library copy. Um, this was, this is a thriller um, and it is about a, you follow two different women. You follow um, a woman named Scarlett who is a professor at this university and you know from the very first chapter that she kills men. She's been killing men for years. Basically bad men, bad men who rape women and sexually assault women and who are just generally shit bags um, and she murders them. And then you're following a freshman at the university uh, who's just moved in and you can tell she's got like some baggage herself um, maybe has like an abusive father and um, she gets really wrapped up in her roommate and her roommate's friends and stuff like that. And so of course those two stories you know intertwine at some point. Um, but yeah very good. Enjoyed this a lot. Gave this one four stars. The other book that I read in that vlog, the last one that I have um, already talked about this month, is What Comes After by Joanne Tompkins. This is a pretty beefy book that did not take me very long to read, surprisingly. Um, I thought this was going to be more of a mystery, like not so much a thriller, but a mystery. My cat is in here trying to get into a bag. Hey, quit. Quit. Um, 
And this follows a couple different characters. You have a situation uh, in the Pacific Northwest where two teenage boys have died. You don't exactly know at the beginning. Well, you do kind of know what has happened. Um, you get more about that. And so in this book, you are following um, the father of one of those boys. You're following a pregnant teenager who knew both of those boys. And you're following one of the boys, like, before he died. Um, and it's really a... It's very literary, um, and it's less mysterious. It's definitely not a thriller, but it is a very sweet found family type story um, that does not shy away from, like, difficult things uh, at all. You, it's obviously a story about grief, um, as you, you know, you have these characters who are grieving the loss of these two boys um, in different ways. And I really liked it a lot, and I also gave it four stars. I had a lot of four stars so far. Um, another four star <laughs> that I'm going to talk about. Um, I read Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. Um, this fulfilled the prompt of reading a buzzword um, book, which was the buzzword was Time of Day. So I went with, you know, Today, Tonight, Tomorrow. Also... This fulfills my trying to read a book of the month book every month prompt. Um, this is a YA contemporary book, which I don't read a ton of YA anymore, but I've had this on my shelf. I like Rachel Lynn Solomon as a person and as an author, so I wanted to give it a shot. And this follows two characters, uh, Rowan and Neil, who have been in constant competition all throughout high school. Um, they're always like one and two in everything. Uh, and they basically, you know, are constantly at each other's throats. Um, and through this um, thing that's called Howl at their high school, which is like the, the day, they have like a half day for their last day of school, and then the rest of the day is like this scavenger hunt through Seattle where they live. Um, and the winner gets a prize, it's this whole thing, and um, they end up teaming up in this, um, this game to try to win. And through that, find out that they have a lot more feelings for each other than just hatred and competition. Uh, so it's very cute. I did enjoy it a lot. It's very, it's very YA, and that is fine. It's a YA book, but I gave it four stars. Um, I thought it had some really. My cat just there's like a couple of plastic bags in here, and she just she's having a time with it. What you doing, baby? Don't you just leave Dad alone? Uh, there were some points in this book that were very swoony, and I appreciated that a lot. So, um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is, uh, I, I talked in my last, in my wrap-up video for July, that at the end of the month I read volumes one and two of Heartstopper by Alice Oseman, and then at the very, very beginning of August I read volume three of Heartstopper. This one was actually my least favorite, though. Um, I gave this one three stars. I can barely remember what was going on. I know this is where they go to France uh, for like a school trip. And I just wasn't loving this one as much. And I really thought I would love it the most because I'm like, ooh, they're going on like a school trip. That's so fun. I don't know. It just wasn't for me. I want to say it wasn't for me. I just, in comparison to the other two, I didn't like it as much. We're getting a lot of like um, manufactured drama in this one. And I guess I just preferred the other two. But I'll still continue reading the series. So I've wanted to read this series for quite a while and um, Grace from GK Reads, who you hear me talk about a lot, I really enjoy her channel, um, is doing a read-along of the Tana French uh, Dublin Murder Squad series and I, at one point we had the first book in the woods. I think my husband tried to read it, he didn't really like it, maybe got rid of it. Well, then I picked a copy up for like two or three dollars recently because I knew she was doing this read-along and I wanted to participate. So, um, I decided to read the first one, um, which is, as you can see, In the Woods. And this is a very literary mystery thriller. Um, so it is as much about the detectives, um, the people, uh, as it is the actual mystery there's a murder of course um the actual like thriller aspect of it i enjoyed this a lot it was much more um it was much more i'll just say 
than most thrillers I read. Most thrillers I read are just like, you know, Pacey's. Like, if you're comparing it to They Never Learn, like, it's a very different kind of book. Um, they Never Learn is very plotty and fast-paced and unbelievable, but, like, just fun. Uh, and this is a much slower, introspective read. Um, and I was under the impression that we would follow the two main characters in this book throughout the whole series, and that is not it. Um, apparently, it follows a different character in the Dublin Murder Squad every single book. Um, now, I know there's, there's a, one of the main characters is the main character of the second book. Um, but then other than that, they're all different people, which makes me sad because there's definitely unresolved stuff in this book. And I'm like, are we going to ever get to that? But anyway, um, the actual plot of this book is you have um, a detective named Rob Ryan, which I hate that name. Um, I don't know. It's just weird. Um, when he was like 10 or 11, he, he lived in this small town in Ireland. And yeah, all this is set in Ireland. He lived in this small town in Ireland. And he and his two best friends went out into the woods um, and they went missing and only he came back like later in the day and he was like completely shocked. There were like these weird, like his shoes were full of blood, but it wasn't his blood. Um, and uh, he couldn't remember anything about what happened and his two friends were never found. And then he like went off to boarding school, started going by a different name. And now he is a detective on the murder squad um, and gets sent on this case of a girl found dead in the same woods that he once went missing in. There are, there's unresolved stuff in this book and I, I don't need to be spoon fed, but I needed to know the ending. I needed to know the ending of certain things in this book and I didn't get it and I don't think I'll ever get it and it haunts me to this day. So this is, this book was published a while ago. Like this, this book is, um, you know, over 15 years old, I would say. Let's see. When were you published? 2007? So 14 years old. So I'm sure a lot of you have read this. Let's talk in the comments um, about this because I need answers. And the last book that I'm going to talk about today is The Other Black Girl by Zakia Zakia Delilah Harris. This is a debut. I was so excited about this book. It follows um, a woman. It's it, it of course describes it as Get Out because it's a book about black people that is like a thriller-ish. So it gets compared to uh, Get Out. But you're following Nella who is an editorial assistant at this big publishing house in New York City and uh, she is the only black girl who works there so you have a lot of um, commentary on what that is like and just how white the publishing community is um, and just her trying to like make her way. And then this other black girl gets hired, I can't remember her name, um, Hazel. <gasps> There's Hazel in this book! My cat Hazel is laying at my feet right now. So this other black woman, Hazel, gets hired and she seems very like self-assured and she kind of just walks into this publishing house and is able to just sort of like like code switch basically and just kind of like talk to these white people um, and sort of like win them over. And uh, Nella is just like, man, I've worked here for like a couple of years. Like I just can't make strides with these people. I've tried um, and that sort of thing. And then some like really weird things start happening. Nella starts getting threats that she should leave the publishing house. She's wondering what's going on. Um, her and Hazel, of course, get very close very quickly or you know start to um because they're the only two black girls in the office and so they talk a lot about what that's like and their experiences as black women um and oh i loved where this book was going and i loved what it was trying to say but there was just a lot for me missing from the plot and like a lot of things that didn't maybe make a lot of sense not that it was like unbelievable, but there were just like, maybe there were just plot holes or like gaps or something. And this is a debut for this author, so I would be definitely willing to read from this author again. I gave this book three stars. It was enjoyable. Um, I was just, there was something missing from it for me. Um, but I loved the whole concept and I liked what it was saying. Um, I think I just would have liked some things different in the book. 
All right, so that's all I'm going to talk about today in my recent reads video. Stay tuned for my next one, which will be sometime in the middle of September. Uh, and I'll talk about the books I read at the end of August and on into September. Let me know if you like this um, format of just doing recent reads uh, and then you get to hear me talk about each book a little bit. And then I don't have to film for 30 minutes and go on about 10 different books. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll be back soon with more book talk. Bye!